Hi, uh, this is GeoGebra, and we're going to look at uh, some of the basic things that it can do. Uh, it's a fairly versatile program, but we're just going to look at uh, basics of plotting a function. So first of all, to put a function, uh, one way to do that is to put it into the input box. So let's say f of x is equal to x squared plus 2, and it plots that function for us. Now, I can give a label to this by right-clicking, going to Object Properties, and saying Show Label. And I'm going to show both the name and the value. And you can see it's given me uh, a, a nice label for that. Now, my function is sitting pretty high in uh, on my grid right now. Uh, so I'm going to go to the Move Graphics View tool. And what that allows me to do is to move my grid around um, until I can see it a bit better. Now with the Move Graphics tool, I can also adjust my axes, and they automatically scale for you. And if I want to go back so that these are square, I can right click and go to the ratio between the axes and change that to 1 to 1. Now if I want to add a color to this function, I can right click that, Object Properties and select Color, and I'm going to make this one a red. I pick the color I want, and it's turned it red. I can also, in object properties, change the type of line. So let's make that a little heavier line. And if I wanted to do a dotted line, I could do that there as well. Okay. Now I can put another function on here by just typing it in the input box again. So let's put g of x equals x plus, sorry, x minus 2. And it's put that function over here. Now I can actually grab this and move it if I want to. Now that obviously changes the definition of the function and if I go to the basic you can see it's changed it to x plus 3.9668. Now I can change it here as well. Let's make that a, an, a 4. And let's label that and color it. So I'm going to put name and value on it. And let's make this one a blue one. And you can see that my other colors are kept here just in case I want to use the same color again. Okay. And so the label for this one has showed up down here. Now, <clears throat> sometimes it's useful to show where these two objects would intersect. And so uh, the intersect to objects tool will allow me to do that. And so I can highlight both of those, click, and it'll give me uh, the point where those two intersect. And let's show the value of that. So point A is the intersection and it occurs at negative 1, 3. Now, if I change the definition of one of these, so let's change it for this line, and let's say it's x plus 3 instead, you'll notice that A changes accordingly. And again, I can grab this and move it if I want to, and it shows me what it's become, and A will move with it. So it's a fairly dynamic system. Now, you can also uh, make the input of these dynamic. Let's look at how to do that. So I'm going to start a new file, and I'm going to start by putting on a slider and I'm going to call that A. And I'm going to put in a function, let's call it f of x is equal to A times x. Oops. A times x. So this A here uh, is actually referring to this A. It's been defined. And so when I click enter, uh, my line shows up here. And let's show the equation of that. And so we see that f at x is equal to 1x, and a is equal to 1. And uh, you know, these are the same. And as I change the value of this, the graph changes with it. Now, by going to the properties of this line, I can change uh, how, how that will uh, adjust. So let's make this go up to 20, maybe. 
and I'll just go with increments of one. And so now it goes by ones, but I can go all the way up to twenty. Okay. So you can also uh, put in check boxes to show objects or turn them on and off. So we can go to checkbox to show or hide object, click it, and I'm going to say show line as my title, and I want that to apply to that line. And so now when I have to select my pointer tool first, so when I click that, that line appears and disappears. So now to use this picture, uh, we want to copy and put it into a different program. Um, so first of all, you can actually just save it or export it as a, uh, a picture, and that'll keep the uh, entire view. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can actually just copy it directly to your clipboard, and that's useful if you're going to put it into, say, a Word document. So here's my Word document. I can just paste that in, and it becomes just a picture within the Word document.